teachers, perhaps your students have heard of Newton's laws of motion. An object in motion stays in motion, and an object at rest stays at rest until acted upon by an outside force. Acceleration is force divided by mass. And for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Wouldn't it be great to have an easy way to demonstrate all of those laws? Well, one way is you can purchase what's called a Newton's Cradle. It's a set of steel ball bearings that hang from cables, and by dropping them, you can see Newton's law of for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. But what about his other laws? And what if you don't have enough money for every student to have a Newton's Cradle? Well, you can easily build your own with these materials. You'll need a ruler that has a groove down the middle and none of the holes punched in it to go in a binder. Each student will need five marbles. If you cannot find these rulers, you can make this out of a tag board. This is simply a grooved piece of paper that's been accordion folded. And there's a master for this in the handout. That's all you need for this. And then of course, the Newton's Cradle lab sheet. Let's take a look at how this will work. Question one says, place four marbles near the center of your channel so they are touching edges. We're going to roll a fifth marble against those. What do you think will happen? Before you allow students to roll them, before you give them all the marbles, ask them to write a hypothesis and predict what they think will happen. You may even have them get up into groups, depending on what their hypothesis is. Like if a person says rolling one in will cause these four to move, have them stand up and anyone with the same hypothesis stands up with them. Then ask for other hypotheses, other divergent opinions, and have students stand up who agree with that. This way you can verify that every single student has recorded a hypothesis. Now we're gonna conduct the experiment and find the result. And I noticed that when I rolled the one in, one rolled out. You wanna have as level a surface as possible to make this work. Now let's move on to question two. It says set up three adjacent marbles near the center and roll two against them. What do you think will happen? Again, have the students write their hypothesis before testing it. Now let's conduct the experiment. Two marbles going into three. And two came out. This demonstrates that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. When one rolls in, one rolls out. When two roll in, two roll out but it also demonstrates that objects at rest remain at rest and objects in motion remain in motion until something stops them or acts upon them. In this case, friction acts upon them and makes them stop. For question three, it says to set up two near the center and roll in three. According to what we've learned, how will this even work? When I roll in one, one rolls out. When I roll in two, two roll out. But if I roll in three, how can three possibly roll out? Have students write their hypothesis. Here we go with the test. And you see that three of those rolled out. I don't have a perfectly level surface, so it doesn't work as well as an actual Newton's cradle would work. Lastly, I can take four marbles and roll them into one have students write their hypothesis on question number four. Here we go. And it doesn't work as neatly as an actual Newton's cradle would work. Your students might get better results than I'm getting here on this table. Let's try it in the other direction and see what happens. That was a little bit better, but not much four went in, four came out. You may w wish to purchase an actual Newton's Cradle to demonstrate this more perfectly for your students, but this allows them a hand-on approach to this. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. How about the definition of acceleration? That force is divided by mass. How could I demonstrate that? Well, I know that if I roll one marble into four, one will move out. But what if I swap this for a different marble with a greater mass. What do you think will happen now? When I roll in one, will one roll out? When I roll in one slowly, will one roll out fast? Will I have more marbles roll out to match the mass of this one? 
that's a good experiment to try in your classroom and see what happens when you roll one large marble into smaller ones. And you may have noticed that one came out, all of them moved, but this one moved quite fast compared to how fast that one came in. And it shows that the transfer of mass becomes acceleration. It relates to the acceleration of that last marble. So try this in your class. It's very easy to do and very versatile. Whereas a store-bought Newton's cradle would only have five ball bearings, I could increase the number of marbles on that groove if I wanted to and experiment with different ratios of numbers go, of marbles going in or coming out of that line. And of course, I could vary the mass, which you can't do on a store-bought Newton's cradle. So this is a great way to have your students explore all the different laws of Newton. However, make sure that your students don't lose their marbles.